So perfectly timed to talk to us while there's no tennis is the 2001 Wimbledon champion Goran Ivanisevic. Goran, first of all, let's just talk a bit about Nadal because you were watching the match. You were working last night, weren't you, here? Uh, I was not working, but I watched the match and it's pretty impressive the way Russell play. I never saw him play. I knew he's from Czech Republic, tall guy. He beat a Croatian guy first round, Dodik. But uh, to play like that from the first to last point without any pressure, he was just he, like he looked like he went out of some kind of the game, the video game, and just came on the court and just hit the harder and harder every single shot. Well, it needed a superhuman effort, didn't it, to beat someone like Nadal playing in the form that he has been playing in? No, but uh, I saw first round Nadal and he was not looking good. He was not Nadal from last year. He was struggling a little bit against Bellucci. Yesterday was also not Nadal, great Nadal, but still you have to beat Nadal. And the way he lost, I mean, the way the guy beat him, I mean, it's all credit to him. It's really tennis. I thought he's going to maybe get tight a little bit in the end, but the last two service games were unbelievable, like three, four aces, two, three winners. Unbelievable, impressive. You could, you could most probably relate to this, though, uh, Goran, because you have a huge serve, you hit the ball really hard, and uh, you must have had matches when, when everything just seems to be working and the picture is very clear to you. Yeah, I think that's what he thought, especially after the loss, the four set 6-2, that break helped him a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. he went in, probably he cooled down a little bit, and then he said to himself, OK, I come in again and just try to hit the ball like I was doing it for first three sets because he could win easily the first set. He had three set points the first just set. Just looking at the uh, final game And here. look at the last game, you know, he just he won ace, a couple of winners, and he was just continuing and believing that he could hit, I mean... He 20 hit 20 win winners yeah. in the final set. Yeah, he just look at, I mean, every shot was like a winner, you know, winner or mistakes, was no rally, so he didn't give Manadal any chance to come back. Yeah. And it was the speed as well, Goran. He didn't give him time to get ready. He was just the, he was just coming out and just smacking them, wasn't he? That's how you're supposed to play against Nadal, if you can. You know, he yesterday he made it, but usually you lose because you have to. It's too risky. You need to make a lot of winners. You're going to make too many mistakes. But uh, yesterday was working. It was working perfect, and now he's. Uh, it's one of the biggest uh, upsets in the history of this tournament. Yeah, I think the impressive, I'm looking at the stats, and sometimes stats don't mean anything, but I think the fact that Nadal uh, is uh, down for 41 winners and 16 unforced errors, those numbers alone will tell you that Nadal won. His opponent, Rosso, 65 winners and 29 unforced errors. I mean, it's actually ridiculous. Like, you're not supposed to be able to play like that. Not, but... Uh Happens. It happens. Sometimes it's, happens, you know. And, and you're saying this is the way you play against Nadal. The mindset that he had too, where he's really not playing against Nadal, he's playing his own game, not worrying if he's playing against Nadal or, or Federer. That's the way you have to play it as well. That's the way, but now we see uh, tomorrow is a big match for him because uh, tomorrow he has to win, in my opinion, yeah. to prove this, that he is capable to be better player, not 100 in the world, that he is uh, capable to do big things. So if he loses tomorrow, then they're going to say, OK, he beat Nadal, and that's it. But I think he's, uh, if he plays not like this, but 50% like this, he can do a lot of damage in the rest of the tournament. Jimmy Connors actually tweeted that he, he described um, Rosal as a stopper, someone who would stop the big players but wouldn't actually progress much further himself. I don't know about that, but... Uh, you have to give him credit. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's living his life, a dream now, you know, at least for two days, last night and today. And, uh, but he still looks like the cartoon character for me. He came out of the <laughs> one funny cartoon and played the, the best match I ever saw for a long time, you know, in Wimbledon. And uh, sorry. No, no, carry on. Yeah, of course, Nadal was a bit uh, was a bit upset with some of the some of the movements that he had between serves. Uh, there was one um, situation where Nadal actually, they walked into each other. Uh, what do you take? Oh, well, that wasn't much. I've seen Boris Becker do much worse than that. Oh, but yeah. What do you think of Nadal's behavior there? I don't know, maybe he was a little surprised the way Russell uh, <laughs> just played. Yeah. And he was upset that uh, he thought he was going to lose, you know, and then everything was bothering him. You know, usually when you when you're losing, everything is bothering you. Like he lost in Madrid and then blue clay was not good enough. 
probably yesterday he, he was not feeling the ball well and uh, now Russell is, I don't know, what, bothering that he's walking too close to him. So everything is, uh, all these little things is bother you when, you when you're not playing your best tennis and when the guy plays like that. Mm. Russell yeah. seemed oblivious of that. He said, I don't know what he was complaining about. He played good match, but I played better. And that's about as simple as it. He played, he just played so much better than Nadal. Yeah, he played better and uh, he deserved to win. In every aspect of the game, he was better than, uh, than uh, Nadal. Where does yeah. this rank for you in the world of Grand Slam upsets? Uh, probably one of the biggest uh, upsets. I don't know, back then, you know, 34 years ago, maybe when Becker lost to Michael Doohan, I don't know what's his name. Uh, Peter Doohan. Yeah. Peter yeah. Doohan, yeah. yeah. First or second on Wimbledon. I don't know, before that was also a lot of upsets, but uh, this is a huge upset, especially nobody expected Nadal to go and I, I thought Nadal is going to go to the final, honestly, especially on this grass, slower grass, and especially second week when he picks the form up. And now he, he met Mr. Rossol in the second round and he's out. Maybe for, him, uh, for uh, Olympic Games he's preparing. Think Nadal maybe has a chance. For, yeah, he was, there was a good couple of matches <laughs> preparation for Olympic Games. You know? yeah. So he's got more rest before the Olympics. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. You know? Let's look at the upsides, Goran, shall we? Let's look at the upsides. There's a big cheer behind us, by the way, because the covers are now off. So we're hoping that play will get underway here at Wimbledon shortly. But I think we should just carry on talking a little bit more about Nadal. We're going to come on to some of your other things. I will, for instance, I want to ask you about you being a West Bromwich Albion fan, but we'll, we'll talk about the football yeah, well, in a minute. What is wrong with West Bromwich? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you jealous? Are you je no, I'm a Crystal Palace fan, so maybe oh, I am jealous, actually. OK, that's OK. Um, but, yeah, so 25 years ago was that upset, actually, with, with Dunan. So do you think this is the biggest Wimbledon upset for 25 years? I think so. Ivo Karlovic. Ivo Karlovic beating Hewitt. Hewitt, yeah. They, they, they didn't put that one, but that's a big upset. But otherwise, I think, yes, I mm. think this is the biggest one yeah. for me. I think that I think the, the interesting thing with uh, Lucas Russell uh, beating Nadal is that this is the way that you have to play and the way you can beat Nadal. That's the way that Robin Serling sort of beat Nadal in the French Open, is hitting really hard, not uh, making Nadal play. And what I really like is that they're making Nadal a worse player by not worrying about him. And I, I, and I don't understand why not more players don't go in and try and play this way, because you really can't beat him if you just play tennis. I don't know, maybe they're scared, maybe they don't believe they can do it for five sets or three sets or four sets, whatever. I, I don't know, but he just, uh, I think it's a good thing that Russell showed them yeah. that it's possible to do it. If you believe it, if you have your day, he had his day yesterday. So nothing was bothering him, even the little break helped him. So I think uh, you should. A lot of people beat Federer like that before when they started to believe they can beat him. Yeah. So I think they're going to do it with uh, Rafa and Djokovic also. Okay, uh, Nadal, when he lost to Söderling in 2009, he came back, had the best year of his career in 2010. Last year he lost to Novak Djokovic. I think he's a better player this year than he was last year. What can Nadal learn from this loss? So what is it that he needs to do to prevent this from happening? Or is it always going to happen when you have guys like Russell? I can always say that, but I think uh, after Nadal winning French seventh week, I think he's, uh, he was so happy that when he came here, well, I don't think he was so hungry. Yeah. For, he thought, OK, I'm going to go by this first week somehow, and then second week, I'm coming. Mm. But he met Mr. Russell unexpected and he's out now so I think he's gonna learn that he has to give 100% and that he has to play tennis because he's number two he's one of the best tennis player ever but he can lose to the guys like this if he's not on 100% he can lose to guys like this of course in theory this should be good news for Andy Murray because it opens up the draw for him but I think that some of us worry that it actually might, in some ways might make it more difficult for him because mentally now he's, he knows that everyone will be thinking his life is easier because he doesn't have to face Nadal. Yeah, you already put him in the final. That happened actually 2001. It's a, pretty much the same story when uh, you put Mr. Henman in the final and then one guy from Croatia, I know him very well, came and then beat him, you know, so... And broke uh, our hearts. Uh, yeah, broke, broke our, our hearts, hearts I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, just looking at the draw here, actually. This, this is, is this is the this draw is, now. This can be good and bad for Mari. You know, he has a Baghdadis next round, which is very tough upon him. Uh, then you have Tsonga, you have uh, uh, Mr... Uh, Marin Cilic, Marin is, Cilic there, is there, Yeah. Your protégé. <laughs> so, 
So it can be, you know, uh, okay, Mari is the biggest favorite to go into the final there, but he has to concentrate about each match. Doesn't think that Nadal is not there. He has to, you know, he has a chance now, but uh, it's going to be tough for him. It's going to be more tougher now. For what do you think Ivan Lendl will be saying? What do you think he'll be saying to Murray? I think Ivan knows what he's going to say. I mean, Ivan is so experienced. He's been to the finals. He won the Grand Slam, so he knows what to say. Yeah, I think he's going to calm him down. He, he should be thinking match by match. And he's playing well at the moment. He has a ma tough match yesterday against Karlovic. So I think he's ready. This is... Uh, but he, like I say every year, Andy Murray is ready to win a Grand Slam. He's a very good player. He beat those guys before. He knows how to win, so he's ready. And now it's his chance to get into the final, and in the final, you never know. And if he meets Djokovic in the final? I still think uh, Djokovic is good. Djokovic is my first pick to win a grand this year. Wimbledon, I said before that the tournament started, so I still stick with Djokovic. Do you ever talk to any of the players like Djokovic about your Wimbledon experiences? Or certainly players, maybe, OK, Djokovic has already won, but a player who hasn't won Wimbledon, do you ever have a chat with them and give them some tips and advice? I, I never talk, but I understand Andy. You know, I, I was in the same position like him. Uh, being in the finals, uh, semi-finals, not winning, and all the same question: If are you going? Are you ready? Are you, this is your, the this is the year when you're going to win. If you ever going to win, so I feel a little sorry for Andy, and I wish him all the best. To be honest. So, how did you then make that step to becoming a winner, a Wimbledon winner? I don't know. I just... Other than the rain. <laughs> did you lose? Did you have no? Co I mean, sometimes we think, oh, now he has. He's lost three finals, three Grand Slam finals, Andy Murray, without winning a set. Uh, is his confidence not high enough in finals, so he thinks he can't win, or did that affect? I mean, did I, I can't imagine that happening to you. You get to the finals, you think you can win. Sure, but I think he's not. He never produced his best tennis in the final. He right. always steps back. In the final, you cannot wait for your opponent to make mistake like Djokovic, Federer, I expect they're going to miss. They're not going to miss if you don't make them miss. Right. So you have to make them, you have to put pressure. In Australia, play bad final against Djokovic. He was staying too far back mm. and Djokovic was dictating the game. But maybe now he lost first mm. round on Queens. Nobody, no expectations. So I think maybe that's his year. You know, you never know when is your year. When you least expect it, the good things happen. You know? We can just see his coach, Lendl, or we, we were just seeing his coach, Ivan Lendl. Is <laughs> Murray uh, warming up down at uh, the practice courts? Yeah. I think that, uh, yeah, Ivan, Ivan Lendl's role now is really important. His whole team around yeah. him is really important yes. for Andy Murray. And do you think maybe it helps Andy Murray that his style of play is uh, one that plays his opponent? He is not a Lucas Russell who just goes for winners or, or plays his game. Andy Murray plays his game, of course, but he plays his opponent. So every match, every point is is uh, is a tactical um, a tactical puzzle. Is that maybe going to help him to stay in the moment? It, it does. He's yeah. very tactical. He knows. I think he studies the players very good. You have now Ivan, who is even more in, into that. Watching the tapes, I spoke to Ivan in Australia. You know, he takes the tape of every match or every player. They study it together, and I think he improves his his game from Australia. Mm. I think he's much more aggressive, you know, so I think he's going to help him in this. Uh, so it's important for him to pass first week first. So tomorrow is a very important match We've and then we see.